Yo, so the ball bounce animation video I did a while back seems to be taken uh, pretty good. So I thought I'd just follow that up with a quick video on how to rig the ball itself. It's because it's pretty important that you need to be able to separate the rotation and the squash and stretch. Um, and as well, have a little tail that can flap around. And I'm not going to go into too much technical detail because it's, it's quite a simple rigging tutorial. For all those technical riggers out there, it's, you know, Calm your farm, bro. It's all wrong. So I've put a start file in the description below. And you'll also notice that, yes, I've included the actual ball rig itself. So you don't have to watch the entire video. <laughs> uh, but if you do, just download and run. Uh, just, you know, give me a comment or at least a like just to let me know that it's helpful, you know, and it helps me out too, I think. I don't know how YouTube works. I think that helps. Anyway, it makes me feel better. <laughs> All right, so here's the start file. You notice I've already got the ball mesh in here uh, and I've got these objects here. So I've already sort of gone through and skinned the tail to the joints. Uh, so if you expand here, you can see if I grab a few joints, uh, this will actually deform the tail. Um, so what we'll do is we're just gonna hide the tail for now. So you can see I've got the tail group here. Just hide that for now and we'll, we'll work solely on the ball first. Um, so what you wanna do, is just grab these controls and we want to put them in place. We want to match this to the bottom of the ball. One way to do that, uh, to get it precise, is we can actually hold X on the keyboard and now it's going to snap it to the grid. So I can just snap it straight to the center there and that's done. Uh, and now with the squash and stretch controller, um, I want to do this, uh, I want to put this in the middle of the ball. So what you can do is, is you can grab the squash and stretch controller first, hold shift, select the ball, Go up to modify, choose match transformations, and you can do match all if you want, but I'm just gonna do match translation, which will basically just put the same um, translate point at the ball's translation point. All right, now I'm going to grab the rotate control, and I'm just gonna sort of move that. Um, let's do a similar thing. So what I'm gonna do first actually is I'm gonna just I go into rotate mode, I'm gonna hold down J, and then start rotating it and you'll see it snaps. Uh, and so now we've just rotated it 90 degrees, which you can see here. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. So while that's still selected, I'm gonna hold shift, select the ball mesh, go to modify, and I'm gonna go match translation. And now that's gonna put it in the same spot as the ball. So if I go to wireframe, you can see that that now lives inside that ball. Uh, and the position, the pivot point is matching the ball as well. But we actually want this, um, the icon of this to be up here. So if I was to just move this up now, um, it's going to move the pivot point. So we want to remember, we want to keep the pivot point down here. So one easy way to do that once you've got your shape in place um, is you can just go, hold right click, go to control vertex mode. And now I'm going to go up here to choose component only, select all the points, and now just simply move these points up. So that's just moving the, the control points, not the actual object. So if I go back to object mode now, um, you'll see that I haven't actually moved the pivot. The pivot stayed exactly where the ball is, but the shape is now up here. Now we've got all these in place. Uh, we want to zero these out. When we're animating, if I was to now move this and animate it, if I want to zero it back to its original place, um, if I just grab all these and choose zero, it's going to go somewhere else because this is where its original place was zeroed at. So if I undo that, put it back where we want it, now I'm going to zero this. So I'm going to grab all these controls and I'm just going to go up to, go to your poly, poly modeling tab, scroll over to these shortcuts and you see this one on the end here is called freeze transformations. Just click that and what that's going to do is, now you'll notice on this object, these are all zero now. Um, so if I was to move this, I can simply just reset it by choosing zero and it's going to go back to the initial starting point. And that'll happen on all these controls now. So now we just want to set up some relationships. So one thing we can do is we can do a direct parent. So I can grab the move control down here and this is going to move the translation of our ball. So because the squash and stretch and the rotation, we want them to go with our movement. Um, I can simply just parent these controls to the move control. So I can grab this one, then hold shift and select the squash and stretch controller. 
And if we want, we can go in the outliner here and I can just um, hold middle mouse and drag that onto the move control. And you can see now that these are now children of the move control. So if I grab the move control now and move this, uh, they're moving with it. Now we want the ball mesh to follow this move controller. So uh, one thing we could do is we could just select the ball mesh and I could uh, drag that onto the move control as well as these other controls. But the problem we have there is if I grab say the move control and I press uh, H on the keyboard, it's gonna hide everything underneath it. So sometimes we wanna um, only see the mesh but hide all the controls. If we have everything in the one hierarchy, it's gonna make that really hard for us. So um, instead of directly parenting it, what we can do is we can use constraints. Um, so if I go to the um, sub menu over here and choose the rigging sub menu, now we've got a constraint menu up here. And if I click on that, you'll see we've got a whole bunch of different constraints. So what I'm gonna do to keep the ball mesh following just the translation of this translate control, the move control, I'm gonna first select the parent object, which will be the move control, then hold shift and select the mesh. I'm gonna go up to constrain and I'm gonna choose point. So point will only inherit the translate. So I'm gonna to go to the options for that and just give it a quick reset and I'm just gonna click maintain offset and click add. So now, if I grab this um, control here and move this around, you can see now the ball will follow that controller, but it will remain outside of the hierarchy. So now we basically wanna set up uh, our rotate control. So if I click on wireframe shaded. So with this, I'll select our uh, rotation control, then I'll shift select the mesh, I'll go up to constrain, and I will choose orient uh, options. Now let's just give it a quick reset. Uh, just leave maintain offset on and go add. So now uh, this should rotate with our rotate control. Now our squash and stretch control um, is gonna be a little bit different uh, because we actually wanna use a deformer for this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the ball mesh and I'm gonna go up to the deform tab, go down to nonlinear and choose a squash deformer here. Now this is gonna add a squash handle, which you can see over in the outliner. And if I scroll down in the attributes, you can see that we've got a factor here. So I select that and middle mouse drag, you can see that now we can adjust the squash and stretch of our ball. Um, but that's happening from the center of our ball. So it's easier for us to animate if we have one side that it squashes from. So we can have it from the top, the bottom, or, or either the side or anything like that. Um, for now, we're just gonna choose the bottom, which um, just makes it a little bit easier to understand. So what I'll do is, I'm actually gonna move the, um, so going to translate mode, and we're actually gonna move this deformer all the way down to the ground. So I'm just gonna go up and type zero on the Y axis. So now it's definitely on, on the bottom of the ground. And now we want these, the low bound and the high bound to go back to the outside of the ball. So I'm gonna scroll down again to where we've got these low bound and high bounds. And I choose the low bound to zero, which will set the bottom back to the bottom of the ball. And I'm gonna make the high bound set to two. And that's going to put the high bound back to the top of the ball. So now if we go to the factor, it's gonna now squash and stretch from the pivot point which we placed at the bottom of the ball. But now what we wanna do is we wanna actually make this squash and stretch deformer follow our squash and stretch controller. So again, I'm gonna choose the squash and stretch controller first, then hold shift and select our deformer. Now I'm gonna to go to constrain and I'm gonna choose parent options and go to edit, reset, and just make sure maintain offsets on and just go to add. And now what's gonna happen is um, this deformer will now move with our squash and stretch controller. So if I go here to the factor, and just give that a little bit of squash and stretch, I can now um, control the direction of that squash and stretch by using the squash and stretch controller, just like this. And you'll notice that it's actually independent of the rotation of the ball. One thing you might've noticed is that every time I wanna go to squash and stretch this, I have to go into the attributes and go all the way down here and choose factor, which is a little bit annoying. So we wanna control that factor from our squash and stretch controller itself. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new attribute. So I'm gonna to go to edit, add attribute. And let's just call this um, squash and we'll keep it at a float and let's just go okay. So now you can see we've added a new attribute here called squash. 
Now we want to wire this up so that this squash affects the factor of our deformer. So what I'm going to do is just go to Windows, go down to General Editors and choose the Connection Editor here. And this is going to let you wire something up. So this is like a simple wiring dialog, which will say whatever's here controls whatever's in here. So I'm going to choose our driver, which will be our squash and stretch controller here. And I'm just going to go reload left. And if I just expand this a little bit more, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see now here's our squash attribute that we added. So now I'm going to load the deformer in this channel. So I'm going to select the deformer. Then I usually scroll down to where the actual um, attribute is and I usually select that first and then go reload right and that's going to bring it up basically here so you can see this is the factor so all you have to do um, to get this to control that is simply just select this one and now select that one and that's wired up now as you can see here it's gone yellow um, that's all you need to do so now if I grab the squash and stretch controller I adjust the squash um, attribute it's going to adjust that factor so this is all set up for us now um, so we can pretty much grab our squash deformer and we can press uh, H to hide that and we don't have to worry about that anymore. Our ball is now uh, basically set up so I can I can uh, you know I can move this around and I can rotate it with this and I can now squash it with this and I can choose the direction of that squash like this. So it's just a really nice easy way um, for us to animate everything individually. We'll get to a bit of cleanup but let's just do the tail first. So let's grab the tail here and just press H to unhide it. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a few little shapes to control the tail. So I'm just gonna to go to curves and surfaces, choose this little circle shape. And now we should have a little circle. Yep, there we go, a little circle there. Let's just go into control vertex mode, component selection, select all these, and let's just scale it up a little bit. That'll do, go back to object mode, and now uh, if we go into wireframe mode, so I can see the joints, uh, let's just hide the um, let's just hide the mesh for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this control, hold Shift and select the first joint, and go up to Modify and do Match uh, All Transforms, and now it's going to put that uh, shape exactly where the joint is. So now we just want to move this control so it looks a bit better. So I'm going to go into Control Vertex mode, make sure you're on Component Selection. Select this, uh, I'm going to rotate, hold J, and just rotate that 90 degrees. All right, so now let's go back to this mode again. Let's go back to object mode. And now you can see that we've got this control, uh, which is already set up for us um, for that joint. So now I'm just going to go into translate mode, and I'm just going to hold shift, and then drag this out, and that'll make a clone of this one. Then while this is cloned, I'm going to hold down V and this is going to go to snap to point and I'm just going to drag this to that joint there. So I'm going to do the same thing, hold down shift, clone that. Now hold down V and snap it to this point here. Same thing, shift, drag, hold down V, snap it there. Uh, and we don't need one for the end because that's just the tip of our tail. So now if I was to get the tail mesh back again, you can see that now we've got all our tail controls set up. Um, so uh, of course we have to zero these, so I'm just going to select all these uh, controls here and now let's go up to Poly Modeling tab and I'm also going to, um, so as well as zeroing it, so let's zero it now so that's going to settle to zero. I'm also going to choose this Delete History button which will just basically get rid of any changes we made along the way that might slow, slow it down that we don't need. So just click that as well. Um, Alright, and now I'm just going to quickly go through and rename these. All right, so now I've got them all named. I'm going to pretty much set up their hierarchy. So I'm going to uh, middle mouse drag four to three, then three to two, and two to one. And now you can see we've got our tail hierarchy controls set up. Now I'm just going to hide the uh, tail geo again. And now we want to get these joints to deform with our controls. So I'm going to select our, um, I'm going to use constraints for that. So I'm going to select our child, ob child object first, which is our um, controller, then shift select the joint, go up to constrain and do parent constraint. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this control, then shift select this joint. But instead of doing that action again, 
I'm just going to press G. And what G does is it repeats the last action. So we don't have to go through everything again. So I'm just going to select this object, shift select the joint, press G. And now select this one, shift select this joint, press G. And now you can see that if I were to move this one, it should move the joint now as well. So now if we get the mesh back, you can see that it should all be working as we want. Because these controls live in the tail, um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put those inside it. So I'm gonna grab the first tail object, and I'm just gonna shift drag that into the tail group that we've got. Um, and now you can basically select the tail group and press H, and that'll hide the entire tail group for us, so we don't get that um, you know in the way. Now we've got that set up. Uh, we basically want that to follow our um, our ball. So if I were to uh, let's say rotate this now see how the tail doesn't actually rotate with our ball um, but if I were, were to grab the tail and just get that to orient to our rotate control that will work um, until we actually squash our ball so if I squash the ball a little, little bit like that um, this tail it's not going to deform with the ball mesh so we want to actually get our tail to deform with this mesh so one way we can do that is we can use a, um, a another type of constraint which we can constrain it to an actual point on this mesh so I'm going to select the mesh go into um, vertex mode and I'm going to select this point in here so just select that and now I've got this point that we want to um, attach our tail to so now with that selected I'm going to go into outliner hold control and then select the tail group now I'm going to go up to constrain and go down here to this point on poly and I'm going to click on that and now what's going to happen is uh, this should now follow this point so if I go back to object mode um, there we go, object mode uh, and now uh, if I rotate our ball it will, it will work because it's going to um, obviously follow that point and if I squash our ball it's going to follow the deformation of our ball um, so one thing that's going to happen now as well is if I change the rotation of our squash and stretch, you'll notice that it's still deform like it's still following our mesh, but see how it's rotating? So what's happening is it's 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 sort of normalizing these four quads around the point and it's getting a direction based on the average of those. So it's saying instead of this pointing and following our rotation, it's going to point out here. So that might be desirable if you want that, um, but I find it's just it gets in the way because it it doesn't give us control over the rotation. So um, what we want to do is we want to actually, we want to keep the tail following that point, but we want the orientation to follow the rotation controller up here. So we, if I grab the tail now, you'll notice that it's actually got that point constraint on it, but it's we can't actually constrain that to the rotation because the rotation rotation's already taken over here. So before we do that, we have to just, um, so just shift select all the rotation values here right click and go down to break connections and what that's going to do is that's going to keep the translate to the point but it's going to free up our rotation so now we can grab our rotation control then we can control select our tail group go up to constrain and choose orient and now um, that should all work so if I go to the if I squash that a little bit now and then give it a little bit of rotation notice how the tail is going to stay rotated exactly how our ball rotation is so now it's only going to rotate with our ball um, like this. Um, so now everything will just work exactly how we want it to. Now we just have a little bit of cleanup and stuff we can do. So um, one thing you might want to do is with the controls, um, you might only want to, so if I grab this control down here and I move this around, this is fine. Uh, but if I then go to rotate it, you'll see that it all goes all fucking stupid all of a sudden um, and that's something we don't want and likewise with our say squash and stretch control we don't want to be able to move this around and we don't want to be able to move this around we only want these controls to do what they're intended to do so I'm going to go to the move control down here and over in the um, channel box we can um, grab all the controls we don't want so I can hold um, shift and choose our, all our rotate and scale options right click and go lock and hide and now it's only going to show us our translation. So if I try to rotate it now, I actually can't. Um, and likewise with scale, it won't let me. So that just allows you to not accidentally break the rig or do something you don't want to do.
Um, if, you, if you ever want to get those back, you can just go to edit, go to channel control, and we can simply choose these. And, and if I select these now, I can move these back into here. And same with locked, I can grab these, move them back into unlocked. Um, so let's just quickly do it with the squash and stretch. Um, we don't want to translate this and we don't want to scale this. So I'm just going to hide those. So lock and hide. And with the rotate control, uh, we don't want to translate and we don't want to scale. So I'm just going to right click and go, uh, where is it? Lock and hide. If I were to select, just say the tailbone here and just press H, that's going to hide all those bones. If we want to go through and animate this ball, um, if I select all the controls like this and just press S to set a key, um, this is actually not what we want because this is going to key not just our controls, it's going to also key the mesh, which can give us problems later on. So one thing that you might want to do is once you've set this up, you might want to lock the mesh. Um, so if I grab the mesh now, go to the attribute editor, go to the first tab, um, and then go to display, go down to drawing overrides. We can enable overrides and then set it to reference mode. And that's going to make it so we can't select it in the viewport. Um, you can still select it in the outliner, but you can't select it in the viewport. So let's do the same thing with this tail. Enable overrides, choose reference. And now you'll notice that if I want to select all, all the controls, I'll just make a selection and only the controls will now be selected. All right, so another thing you might want to do is have a global ball control so that we can scale our ball to the size we want. So I'm just going to close, just collapse all the um, object hierarchies here. We want to put all these into a group. So with nothing selected, if we go up to edit and then say group, what it's going to do is it's just going to make an empty group at the origin of our scene. So now I can rename that to ball and I can grab all our ball objects that are related to the ball and I can simply middle mouse drag that into our ball group and now we've got one global control um, that will um, allow us to scale our ball. So if we bring this in, we can scale this up and now we can start animating our ball um, how we want it. Um, so you might want to animate a basketball or a marble. Uh, we can now do that with the ball group. If you want to, want to animate just the ball and not the tail, we can make a control to turn that on and off. So if I go to the main ball group, I can go to edit, add attribute, call this um, tail and we'll set this to a boolean which basically means on or off and I'll go OK now if we scroll down you can see now I've got the tail we can wire this up the same way we did before so let's open up our um, our connection editor and I'm just going to expand that a little bit so in the left I want to choose our ball and go reload left I'll scroll down until we find our tail control here now I want to select, let's go into our hierarchy and select the actual tail group. Now I'll go reload right. And let's scroll down until we find visibility. Here it is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to select tail and I'm going to select visibility. And now that's wired up. So if I close that now, you can see our tail's disappeared because it started off at off. So if I click on the ball now, our tail is going to default off. I can now turn that on just by toggling that. So I can turn the tail on or off whether I want to animate that or not. If this was a more advanced rig, you'd obviously be doing a lot more safe guarding in here. So you'd make a lot more different groups and controls and things like that. But just for a simple ball, simple rig, this will work. This is fine. Um, you can go nuts and start animating it now. So yeah, I hope that helps. And I hope you learned something. If you do animate something with this ball, uh, give me a comment because I'd like to see what you've come up with. It'd be fun. Um, but anyway, have a good day. Bye.